All right, in this Knife Thoughts video, we'll be looking at this knife. This is the Gradation Cutlery Northfield number 62 Easy Pocket Congress in ripe banana camel bone. And this is the second of the 62s I've gotten so far. Uh, I'll show the other that I got also, which is the 62 uh, Titty Ute in Unicorn Ivory Acrylic. So let's take a look at this knife. So, first of all, you see right away this shield. And that goes along with the handle material. But first, I want to talk about what this knife is. So, Gradation Cutlery calls this their Easy Pocket Congress. And uh, from what I gather, there's two reasons for that. One is that the bolsters are rounded as compared to probably most Congress knives or the classic Congress knife, which has squared bolsters. Uh, I'll show you an example of that here in the Great Asian Cutlery number 13 and in a Rough Rider Congress knife. The squared bolsters sometimes, you know, can be a little bit less comfortable in the pocket. But another reason for this being called the Easy Pocket Congress is that the joints are almost sunk, sunken. So sunken joints are when the tang, this shoulder, is below the frame of the handle. And Gradation Cutlery doesn't really do sunken joints very often, if at all. I don't think that they've done really any other than maybe the uh, number 60, or I'm sorry, 16 uh, canoe pattern that they did. But to show an example, this is a Rough Rider canoe. And you can see how that shoulder doesn't sit above the handle and certainly on a canoe pattern it's helped by the fact that it has these upturned bolsters but that's something that can make it a little bit easier to carry and as well a little bit more ergonomic in use so that's why this is called the the easy pocket congress by gradation cutlery but another name for this type of pattern could be a half congress and the reason for that is because it's a single spring knife with two blades a full congress is usually a four-bladed knife with two springs, so two full-size blades and two secondary blades like this Rough Rider, which has two, a spear and sheep foot main, and then a, what was originally a sheep foot, or I'm sorry, a coping secondary and a uh, pen secondary. And that's what would be called a full congress, two, two springs with four blades. So with one spring, it is, can be called a half congress. And that's what this is. It's also what my other gradation cutlery congress pattern that I already showed, the number 13 clerk or office knife is. And gradation cutlery has done full congress knives, but I just don't have any. So that's what this pattern is. Let's first take a look at the blades. So the main blade on this knife is a Warncliffe. You can see that this blade does not go the full length of the handle. And that is partially because of the frame with two blades, this blade going only, you know, what is that? Maybe seven eighths or three quarters of the way along the blade well allows those blades to sit in better. Another thing that that allows as compared to a longer main blade, so again, this is a half Congress, but it has a longer main blade. So a comparison. Even though the 13, which was a surprise to me, is actually slightly shorter in the handle, the blade is a good bit longer. And one big downside to that, in my opinion, is that every 13 that I've had, and I think I've had four, have had blade wrap when I first got them. This one no longer does because I've sharpened the heck out of it, uh, but all of them have come with blade wrap. So having a shorter blade like on this 62 can mitigate that blade wrap. So I really appreciate that. I really dislike blade wrap, and I also really dislike proud tips. That's another thing that the 13 came with. All four that I have had, I believe four, have had at least one, if not more, proud tips. This knife, the main blade sits well down within the frame, no, nowhere near a proud tip. The pen blade 
is pretty close, I'd say. I don't think that it's a practical issue, but you can kind of feel that. And uh, this is one of those knives that I feel like if I was gonna carry it, I probably would drop the kick slightly, but I don't want to, as of now, I haven't put this in my pocket yet because I have the 13 and I have another 62. So uh, the, the tip isn't too proud, but it's relatively close but it's it's a lot better than any of the 13s that I've had. But that's another thing that, that can be mitigated by these blades not being full length. So it's a half Congress with the two blades. It has the Warncliffe main and then a pen secondary, as you saw. And it's a really sleek little knife. That's, that's one thing that, or it's not as little as I expected actually. I hadn't had a 62 before this run in 2020 and it was, it's a little bit longer than I expected, but it is sleek because these blades sit so low, <clears throat> excuse me, and because of these rounded bolsters. So this would be an easy knife to carry, easy knife to throw in your pocket. I'm not sure that it would fit in a watch pocket on most jeans, but it you know certainly would be easy to carry. So I think it would make for a really good office knife because, uh, or office or EDC, because of this Warncliffe. This short Warncliffe is gonna do pretty much any EDC type task you need, cutting string, cutting cardboard, you know, opening boxes, opening mail. It's gonna do really well at that and really will be all you need for a I guess, gentleman's pocket knife. I normally carry a modern knife, a one hand opening larger knife along with my traditionals. So the traditionals usually do the lighter, lighter duty work. And I think that this would work really well for that. Now onto the specifics of this version of the 62. This is again, the 62 Northfield in right banana camel bone. And GEC, as far as I know, has done three knives with this banana shield. And when they first did a knife with this banana shield, which was the 35 Churchill, I really thought it was fun. I like quirky knives. I like these interesting shields that they do sometimes. And so I got one and I really enjoyed it. This is green banana bone, according to GEC. Not super green, but very yellow for sure. And I really enjoyed this banana shield. And I actually did get the second knife that GEC made with the banana shield, which was an 85 uh, teardrop jack. It was actually in rotten banana bone, and it was a little bit more rotten than, than I was expecting. My The bone on my 85 with the banana shield was probably more brown than yellow. And I got rid of it because of that. I am wishing now that I'd kept it just to have a, you know the full set, but Getting to this bone, the I guess I'd say a similar thing kind of happened. Now, this is camel bone. And one thing to know about the difference between camel bone and bovine or cow bone, which GEC generally uses, and I think most companies generally use, is that camel bone doesn't take dye as evenly or consistently and really as deeply as the bovine bone does. That's actually one of the reasons why Gradation Cutlery and also Northfield, uh, or I'm sorry, Northwoods uh, requests the camel bone, or Gradation Cutlery uses it at the request of Northwoods, and then they also do use it on some of their uh, in-house branded knives. And that's because when it doesn't take the dye as evenly, instead of you know a real uniform color, you get a more varied color. And that makes each knife a little bit more unique. It gives them a little bit more character. But the other side of that is that sometimes they don't turn out the way people expect. That happened with the DLT exclusive blue banana, I'm sorry, not blue banana, blue camel bone that they did on this 62 run. And depending on what your expectation was for this knife in the ripe banana camel bone, I think it could have with this too. If you were expecting the color of a ripe banana peel, which is very, very bright, you know, deep yellow with some brown flecks mixed in, I would say that this isn't quite that. 
But if you were expecting the color of an actual ripe banana, then this kind of hits the mark. It has some yellowness to it, but it's a little bit more white tannish with uh, some brown flecks mixed in. So it's not super bright yellow or deep yellow like you might expect if you were thinking of uh, a ripe banana peel, which they were going with on this one with the green banana, the peel of the banana. But if you were thinking of the banana itself, maybe it's what you were expecting. It's not exactly what I was expecting, to be honest. And I don't think that it's a bad looking bone color. I think that it's a traditional color for, you know, a bone handle. But it's not exactly what I was expecting with the, the banana shield. Now some that I've seen online have had more yellow in the handle than mine seems to. Mine has, I think, a little bit more yellow here on the pile side. But, you know, like I said, because of the camel bone taking dye differently, it can vary like that. So that's one of those things where when you're getting a handmade knife that each one is unique, you have to be aware that it might not always be exactly as you expect it, especially with gradation cutlery being willing to do these kind of off the wall, unique bone and shield combinations, bone color and shield combinations that they haven't done before. This is the first time that, that Grayson Cutlery has done this right banana camel bone. And one thing that they did, which I thought was interesting, is they might have noticed that maybe it wasn't quite as yellow as they were expecting. And they also did a surprise run of these 62s with a bar shield and they called the bone a different color. I'm forgetting right now what it was. I think it was antique gold or antique goldenrod, something like that, camel bone. But they did another version of it where they didn't call this bone color yeah, uh, right banana bone. So that's an interesting little tidbit. I'm not sure if those knives will become collectible because they were unexpected. I'm not sure how many were made of them. I know that these ones went fast on every site that I saw. So even though the handles might not be as yellow as I expected, people still really enjoy this banana shield. So overall, definitely an interesting knife. I wanted to real quick compare it to my other 62 from this, also from this run, which is in the Unicorn Ivory Acrylic. Um, I really enjoy the look of this Unicorn Ivory Acrylic. I like this shield, which is a new shield for GEC. One thing is, to mention here is that the tip on this Unicorn Ivory Acrylic pen blade sits a good bit deeper than on this. I don't know how well you'll be able to see the comparison here. I think you can kind of see the difference there. If you look at where it sits, the Unicorn Ivory Acrylic pen blade sits about, you know, a millimeter, two millimeters below the top of the liner, whereas the tip on the right banana bone version is pretty much right at that top of the frame. But that's just one of those differences. Uh, this that a handmade knife will have, they are truly handmade. Uh, and this knife doesn't have blade wrap. So what that kind of tells me is that this pen blade probably could be dropped without cre creating blade wrap. But again, it's not something that I'm sure I'm going to do, but just something to be aware of that they do vary slightly between different knives because they are truly handmade. And so because they are truly handmade, I can overlook some things like a pen blade being, you know, slightly high and a, you know, the bone being not exactly the color I was expecting and still enjoy this knife. And I think if you like the Banana Shield, because it's one of those series that GEC hasn't done a lot of, uh, like I say, they've only done three knives with the Banana Shield as far as I know, it's one that's a little bit easier to collect. Uh, they do other series like the uh, Beaver Tail, which they've done lots and lots and lots of knives in. So it's, it would be more difficult to get all of those models if that's the kind of collection or collecting that you would like to do. Whereas if you want to get all of the banana shield knives, you really only need to get three different knives. And for someone like me, that's a little bit easier to do uh, because as soon as these knives you know, come out 
and are no longer able to be bought on the primary market, they tend to get a little bit more expensive. So if, if you'd like to start a collection of the banana shield knives, I think now is the time because since they did the Churchill in 2017, they've done one each, well, I guess not each year because the 85s were in 2018, I believe, and then this is in 2020. But they've done you know a couple since then, so I think now is the time to get started with that collection. But overall, a very interesting knife, one that I'm happy to have gotten. I got this knife from Ken at Blue Creek Cutlery. I get a lot of my greatest cutlery knives, or most I'd say, from Ken and always get great service. So as always, if you're looking for a place to get greatest cutlery knives, there are a lot of different dealers that have I've bought from and have given me great service, but uh, Ken is who I buy from most frequently at Blue Creek Cutlery. Um, and I think that this is a knife that I am going to keep in my collection for now and maybe try to scrounge up or find one of the 85s with the banana shield and kick myself for uh, having gotten rid of one that I got, you know, when they first came out. But anyway, this is the Gradation Cutlery number 62 Easy Pocket Congress in Ripe Banana Camel Bone. As always, don't forget to check out my website, knifethoughts.com, where I post articles on videos like this and different topics around uh, knives and, and being a knife enthusiast. Uh, also, please subscribe to my channel here. It really helps out. And hit the bell for notifications so that you see when I post new videos. And check out my social media. I'm on both Instagram and Facebook, as well as elsewhere, at Knife Thoughts. And finally, as always, don't forget to go out and do good.